Hello everybody, welcome to Season 6 of the 98th mod of Grand Prix Manager 2. So last season, McLaren still won the Constructors' Championship, however, Alan Prost did not win the Championship last season because that title went to Satoru Nakajima, who was driving for Lotus last season. So, what will this season have in store for us? Let's find out! To start things off, we have the out. Keke Rosberg, who was driving for Nishi last season, jean luc Schleiter, Williams Test Driver, and Yai Nerm in the driver number 2 and Minardi last season, all have no driver rules this season. So with that said, let's look at the driver lineup. First off, we have Nishi. Now, Nishi have Jonathan Palma and Eric Comis, the driver number 1 and 2, both drivers who did not have a driver rule at all last season, and Gabriel Tarquini, who was acts as Test Driver last season, is now theirs this season. Next up, the only other team that didn't score any points at all last season is La Russe. La Russe have kept Oscar Lurie as their driver number one. Their driver number two is Philippe Streep, who was at Ligier last season. And Satoru Nakajima, the person that won last season for Lotus, is now their test driver this season. The next uh, team is the ninth place team last season, which is us at Minardi. Now as you see, I got in Chris Nissen and Mike Sackle. They were the test drivers for Zach Speed and the Ruth last season. I got them in mainly because we, need, we were desperate needing uh, the cash. And also I got Adrian Campos as uh, a test driver which I kept last season. Also, still at Renault because we don't have enough money to get any other engine suppliers despite my best efforts of trying to get another engine supplier. Next up, 8th place was Ags last season. They've kept Derek Ward to join number, uh, number 1. Franco Scapini, who was at Arrows last season that went bankrupt, is now their driver number 2. And Pale Barilla is the new test driver, who was at Ligier last season. Next up, in 7th place, we have Benetton. And Benetton have kept their driver lineup, as they did last season, as well as their engine supplier of Ford. Next up, from 6th place we have Brabham. Again, they have changed nothing in the driver lineup. They also kept their engine supplier of BMW engines. Next up, we have the team that came 5th last season, which is Zach Speed. Gerhard Berger, who was the driver number 2 last season, is now the driver number 1. Michele Alboreta, who was at Ferrari last season, is their driver number 2. And the test driver for Zach Speed is Roberto Moreno, who was driving for Lotus last season. Next up, the team that came fourth last season, which is Williams. Giovanna Matti, who was at uh, Minardi last season, is their driver number one. Stephen Johansson, who was the driver number one at Williams last season, is now the driver number two. And the test driver for Williams is Jean Lacey, who was driving for the Roofs last season. Next up, the team that came third last season, which is Lotus. Philly Palio, who was driving for Williams last season, is the driver number one. Pasco Fabri, who was at Ag last season, is the driver number two, but they've kept the test driver of Joachim Winkelhock. Next up, the team that came second place last season in the Constructors, Ferrari. Ferrari has brought in Nelson Piquet, who was at Zach Speed last season, Martin Brundle is still the driver number two, and Stefano Mondina is still the test driver for Ferrari. Last but not least, the team that won the Constructors last season, McLaren. McLaren have kept the exact same driver lineup of Prost, Senna and Pachese, as well as their engine supplier being Tag Porsche. Before the first round of the season, here is the full driver transfer list. Round 1 is the Brazilian Grand Prix, with Nigel Mansell taking pole position, Nelson Piquet in second, Michele Alberto for sack speed, Oscar Lerouille fourth for the Russ, Gerard Berger 5th for Zach Speed, and Frank Scapini rounded off the top 6. McLaren, who've won the, um, every season of the Constructors Championship so far, qualified 10th and 11th on the grid. K Chris Nissan is 12th for Minardi, and the other Minardi driver, Mike Sackle, is 21st for, um, for the other Minardi. The three uh, drivers who did make the 107% and wouldn't be uh, uh, racing are Philly Street for the Roos, Mike Sackle for Minardi, and Jonathan Palmer for Ligier. Off for of the start of the race, Chris Nissan kept his position of 12th place. 
Lap 10 of the Brazilian Grand Prix and Christensen retires from 13th. Lap 25 of the Brazilian Grand Prix and Nigel Mansell, who was leading the Grand Prix, retired from the race. That pushed Derek Warwick in the Ags into the points position, as well as giving the lead to Nelson Piquet. Lap 30 of the Grand Prix and Frank Scapini retired from third place. That pushed Ayrton Senna in the McLaren into the top six. The race soon ended with Nelson Piquet winning the Brazilian Grand Prix for Ferrari, with both sack speeds of Alberto Berger taking up the other podium spots, T. Bootson team four for Brabham, Derwark fifth for Ags, and Ayrton Senna rounding off the top six. Round 2, the San Marino Grand Prix at Imola. Both Ferraris gained the front row of the grid with Gerhard Berger 3rd for Sack Speed, Franco Scapini 4th for Ags, Michele Alberto 5th for Sack Speed, and Ayrton Senna running off the top 6 in his McLaren, while the 5 time champion of Alan Prost is behind him in 7th. The two Minari drivers are 18th and 20th on the grid, and the three drivers who didn't make the 107% time and would be taking part were both the LaRousse drivers and Mike Fackel for Minardi. Off at the start of the race, Chris Nissan lost position and ended up falling down into last place in 19th. Lap 11 and Chris Nissan retires from the Grand Prix in 18th place. This was a race where absolutely nothing happened at all, but anyway, both Ferraris getting a 1 2 finish with Gerhard Berger taking third for sack speed, Frank competing fourth for Ags, Michele Alberto fifth for sack speed, and Alan Prost getting the top six for McLaren. Like I said, after Nissan's retirement, there was literally nothing to highlight on. Round 3 is the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Both Ferraris looked at the front row, McLaren the second row, and Lotus in the third row. The two Minari drivers are 11th and 90th on the grid, and the, the three drivers who did make the 107% time and would be taking part were both the LaRousse drivers and Eric Comus for Ligier. Off of the start of the Italian Grand Prix, both the Minari drivers kept their positions of 19th and 11th. After Sackle made his first stop of the race and before Chris Nissen came for his first stop of the Grand Prix, Mike Sackle from 13th place retired from the Grand Prix. After Nissen made his first pit stop of the Grand Prix, both the Ferraris were leading the race with both the McLarens 3rd and 4th, Philly Palio 5th place for Lotus, and running off the top 6 was Nigel Matthew Brabham as Chris Nissen retires from the Grand Prix in 17th. Lap 50 of the Italian Grand Prix, Martin Brundle retired from the lead of the race, which pushed his teammate Nelson Piquet into first place, while giving Nigel uh, Pascal Fabri a chance in the Lotus to possibly pass him to get the final point. However, the race ended with Nelson Piquet winning the Italian Grand Prix, both McLarens gained the second and third, Philippe Palio 4th for Lotus, Nigel Mansell 5th for Brabham, and Martin Brundle still managed to salvage a point for his Ferrari team. Round 4, Monte Carlo at Monaco. Both Ferraris gained the front row of the grid, both Brabham the second row of the grid, and both Ags the third row of the grid, with both Minari drivers 10th and 11th on the grid, and the five-time champion of McLaren 12th and 13th, with Alan Prost 13th on the grid. And the three drivers who did make the 107% time and would be taking part of the Grand Prix were both Benettons and off delivery for the Roos. At the start of the race, Mike Fackel kept his 10th position while Chris Nissan fell down to 19th and ended up retiring on the very first lap of the race. After Fackel made his first pit stop of the race, Nelson Piquet was leading the race with Mansell and Snow Brando in second, Dead Warwick third for Ags, Scapini fourth in the other Ags, Berger fifth for Sack Speed, and Nigel Mansell running off the top six in his Brabham. Lap 24 of the Monaco Grand Prix and Nelson Piquet from the lead of the race retired, which pushed Derek Warg and the Ags into the lead, and Michele Alberto in the sack speed into the points position. Shortly after, Mike Sacco retired in his minority. Just like San Marino, after both Marais drivers retired, literally nothing happened. Anyway, Derek Warg won for Ags, Brundle second for Ferrari, Berger's third for Zach Speed, Nigel Mansell fourth for Brabham, 
P for Fred and the Kira Alberto gained the final point in his exact speed. With four rounds down, it was time to look at the Drivers' Championship and the driver leading the championship so far is Nelson P for Ferrari by 14 points ahead of his teammate Martin Brundle who was only one point ahead of Zach Speed in third place with 12 points. And in the Constructors' Championship, we see that Ferrari are evidently leading the championship with 40 points. And in second place, we have... Drum roll please. We have Zach Speed with 21 points who are 19 behind, who are 5 points ahead of Ags in 3rd place with 16 points. Round 5 with the American Grand Prix of Detroit. Nigel Mastain pole position for Brabham. Nelson Piquet, the championship leader, is 2nd for his Ferrari. Gerard Burgess 3rd for Zach Speed. Martin Brundle 4th for Ferrari. Michele Alberto 5th for Zach Speed. And right at the top 6 is Frank Scapini for Ags. While well, the two Minari drivers are 8th and 10th in the grid, and the three drivers who didn't the 100 cent time would be taking part were both Bentons and Stefan Johansson for Williams. During the formation lap, Chris Nesson, who qualified 8th for Minardi, stalled his car, so he had to start from the pit lane. And off the start of the race, um, Mike Fackle gained a position thanks to the pits, the fact that Nesson stalled during the formation lap. At the end of the first lap, Mike Fackle got a 10 second stop go penalty, and so he drops from 10th all the way down to 18th. Lap 10 of the American Grand Prix, and both Minari drivers retired at the exact same time at the very back of the field. Skipping right to the end of the race, I'm so sorry guys I'm doing this uh, a lot more often than the other, other series. The problem is, if there's nothing to comment on, I just can't say anything. Mansell won. McAlbert second, Scapini third, PK fourth, Warwick fifth, Burger sixth. After the Minari's retired, there just seems to be absolutely nothing I can commentate on, and that's so um, frustrating for me because I want to be able to say stuff for you guys, but the problem is, there just doesn't seem to be anything I can talk about after uh, for, those, for the three races that's happened so far. Round six, the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard. Both Ferraris in the front row, both Brabham's in the second row. Michele Alberto fifth for Zach Speed and Franklin Scapini right at the top six in his ags. The two Minari drivers are ninth and twelfth in the grid. And the three drivers who didn't make the 107 time and wouldn't be taking part of the Grand Prix were Oscar Leroux for La Russe, Alessandro Nini for Benetton and Jonathan Palmer for Ligier. Off the start of the race, Franco Scapini stole his car from 6th place in the grid, so he was out of the race for Ags, while both the Minari drivers held their positions of 8th and 11th. After both Minari made their first pit stops of the race, both Ferraris were leading the race, with both Brabham 2nd, no 3rd and 4th, Alberto 5th for Zach Speed, and right off the top 6 was Derek Wark for Ags. After both Minari made their 2nd and 5th pit stops of the race, both Ferraris were leading with Brabham 3rd 4th, Alberto 5th for Zach Speed and Derek Warwick 6th for Ags. Lap 48 of the Grand Prix and Nigel Mansell in 3rd place for Brabham retired from the race that pushed Ayrton Senna in the McLaren into the top 6. Lap 53 and the 5 time champion Alan Prost retired from the Grand Prix from 7th place along with Giovanna Amati in the Williams down in 9th. The race soon ended with Martin Brundle winning for Ferrari, with Boots and Tain second for Brabham, PK third for the other Ferrari, Alberto fourth for Zach Speed, Derek Warwick fifth for Ags, and the game the final point of this race was Ayrton Senna for McLaren. And oh, just a heads up, this is the first race either of the Minari drives actually finished a race so far. So, yeah. Round 7, the British Grand Prix at Silverstone with Martin Brundle taking pole position, both McLaren 2nd and 3rd, Nelson Piquet 4th for the other Ferrari, Philippe Palio 5th for Lotus, and round at the top 6 is Mike Sackle for Minardi, the other Minardi driver Chris Nissan is down in 21st, and the three drivers who did make the 107% time who wouldn't be taking part were Chris Nissan for Minardi and both the Roos drivers. Off the start of the race, Mike Fackel gained a position because Philly Palio in the Lotus fell down to last place before retiring on the very first lap of the race. 
lap six and Mike Vacco from eighth place retired for the Grand Prix along with Michele Alberto in the sack speed. Uh, there was no highlights again after the Minaris retired. Cross one, PK second, Senna third, Brando four, Fumati fifth, and Berger six. <sighs> I'm trying so hard to find stuff to highlight under the problem is there's li there was literally nothing that happened after Thackle's retirement. I'll tell you something actually happened at the end of the seventh Grand Prix. Someone got injured, and it happened to be Nigel Mansell for Brabham, who will be out only for the next race, which is round eight. Round eight was the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim. Andrew Chetter seeing pole position Benetton, both for I second and third, Berger fourth for sack speed, and Sandini fifth for Benetton. And we're at the top six is Michele Alberto for sack speed, while the two Minari drivers qualified seventh and twelfth in the grid. And with the three drivers are doing the 107% time with both of the Roots and Ligier. As you can see, there were two teams that were missing from qualifying. Both Williams and Brabham didn't uh, turn up at all. Actually, no, not Brabham. Um, who else was it that didn't turn up? Oh, yeah, Lotus didn't turn up. So Lotus and Williams didn't turn up at all. And um, speaking of uh, that, Ginzani, the test driver for Brabham, who's taking uh, Matt's place just for this race, qualified 13th ahead of Bootsen, who qualified 14th. Half of the start of the German Grand Prix, both the minorities kept their positions of 7th and 12th. Lap 10 of the German Grand Prix, Picard Ginzani from 12th place, the test driver for Brabham, retired from the race along with Frank Scapini in the AGs. After the Minaris made their first pit stop for the Grand Prix, De Cesaris is leading the race with PK 2nd, Brundle 3rd, Prost 4th for McLaren, Gerhard Berger 5th for sack speed, and round for top 6 is Alessandro Nini for Benetton. After both Minaris made their second and final pit stops of the race, Brundle is leading the race with De Cesaris in 2nd, Prost in 3rd for McLaren, PK 4th for Ferrari, Berger 5th for sack speed, and round for top 6 is Ayrton Senna for McLaren. The race soon ended with Martin Brundle winning the German Grand Prix with Andrew Chester singing 2nd for Benetton, 3rd for Prost in McLaren, 4th for PK in the Ferrari, Ayrton Senna 5th for McLaren, and rounding off the top 6 is Gerhard Berger vs. Zach Speed. With the first 8 rounds down and 8 to go, it was now time to take a look at the Drivers and Constructors Championship. In the Drivers Championship, Nelson PK has a 9 point lead over uh, Martin Brundle, who has a 16 point lead over Prost and Alberto, sharing 3rd place with 18 points. And in the Constructors Championship, we see that Bry are leading with 77 points. And in 2nd place in the Constructors Championship, we see that that team happens to be... Drumroll... Zach Speed with 33 points, which is one more than McLaren. However, they're still 44 behind Ferrari. After the first round of the season, I have decided to swap that wall and Adrian Campos' uh, driver rules. This was pretty much my uh, attempt to try and salvage something for Minardi this season because of how really, really bad this has been so far for us. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to accomplish with it because Adrian Campos isn't that great either, especially when some of the previous seasons he's been with Minardi, he just hasn't done well at all. So I was just clutching at straws and just hoping for the best this season. Round 9, the Hungarian Grand Prix at the Hungara Ring. Franco Scapini team pole possession for Ags, Michele Alberto second for Zach Speed, Eric Comas third for Ligier, Stephanie Hansen fourth for Williams, Derek Warwick fifth for Ags, and Giovanna Amati taking the final uh, spot in sixth place in the grid. The two minority drivers of Christmas and 20th and Adrian Campos 17th, and the three drivers who did make the 110% time, who wouldn't be taking part of the Grand Prix, were Pascal Fabry for Lotus, Alan Prost for McLaren, and Chris Nissen for Minardi. Oh, meanwhile, Nigel Mansell did return after his injury, and he is in, if I can find him on the screen, he is in 7th place on the grid compared to Thierry Bootsen in 11th. On the formation lap, Adrian Campos qualified in 17th stalled his car, so he had to start from the pit lane. And off the start of the race, uh, no one else stalled, so basically Adrian Campos is in 19th. After uh, Adrian Campos made his first pit stop of the race, Alberto was leading the race for a sack speed. 
Kapini second for Axe, Nigel Mansell third for Brabham, Gerard Berger fourth for Zach Speed, Derek Warwick fifth for Axe, and Giovanna Matti running up the top six in the Williams. Lap 48 of the Hungarian Grand Prix, Gerhard Berger retires from 4th place in the Zach Speed. That pushed Adrian Campos in the lead shape into the top 6. After Campos made his 2nd and Fab pissed off the race, Alberto was leading the race with Scapini in 2nd, Nigel Mansell third for Brabham, Derek Warwick 4th for Ags, Giovanna Massey 5th for Williams, and running up the top 6 was Ayrton Senna for McLaren. The race soon ended with Michele Alberto winning the Hungarian Grand Prix with Franco Scapi taking second for Ags, Nigel Mansell taking third for Brabham, and looking at fourth and fifth and sixth we have Derek Ward for the other Ags, Giovanna Matti fifth for Williams, and Yerson Senna gained the final point for McLaren. Round 10, the Austrian Grand Prix at Osterich. Adrian Campbell's being pulled position for Minardi, Nigel Mansell third for Brabham, both Zach Speed third and fourth, Derek Warwick fifth for Ags, and Martin Brown ran for top six for Ferrari, while the championship leader of Nelson Piquet is in tenth for Ferrari, Christmas and eleventh in the other Minardi. The three drivers who did make the 107 time will be taking part for the race with Eric Comus for Ligier, Alessandro Gini for Benetton, and Stephanie Hansen for Williams. After the start of the race, Adrian Campos fell from 1st to 4th, while Christensen gained a place to entertain. Lap 3 of the Grand Prix, Martin Brown from 3rd place to Ferrari got a 10 second stop go penalty while, and dropped from 3rd down to 5th, while Adrian Campos from 3rd place retired from the Grand Prix. After Nissan made his first pit of the Grand Prix, Mansell in the race with both Saks P 2nd and 3rd, Martin Brundle 4th for Ferrari, Derek Warwick fit for Ags and Ayrton Senna running off the top six in his McLaren. Lap 23 and Chris Lissner retiring from the race from 11th along with Philly Palio in the Lotus. So yet again, another double DNF for Minardi. Lap 30 of the Grand Prix and Michele Abreu from 2nd place retires along with the midfield driver of Alan Prost in the other McLaren. That pushed Nelson Piquet in the Ferrari into the top six. The race soon came to an end with Gerhard Berger winning the Austrian Grand Prix in his sack speed, with Martin Brundle second for Ferrari, Nigel Mansell third for Brabham, Derek Warwick fourth for Ags, Ayrton Senna fifth for McLaren, and the final point went to Nelson Piquet in the Ferrari. Round 11 is the Canadian Grand Prix at Montreal. Adrian Campos in Pulinardi, Gerhard Berger second for Zach Speed, Franco Scapini third for Ags, Nigel Mansell fourth for Brabham, Chris Nissen 5th for Minardi, and right off the top 6 is Jonathan Palmer for Ligier, while the championship leaders of Brundle and PK are 16th and 17th, and the three drivers did make the 107 percent time and would be taking part with Andrew Chester for Benetton, and both Lotus drivers. All for the start of the race, Chris Nissen who qualified in 5th sold his car so he was out to the Grand Prix, meanwhile, meanwhile Adrian Campos has mysteriously disappeared to this Grand Prix, not sure why though. Lap 3 of the Canadian Grand Prix and Derek Warwick had a 10 second stop go penalty so he went from 14th to 17th. Lap 58 of the Canadian Grand Prix and Gerard Berger from 2nd place to retire from the Grand Prix. That pushed Thierry Boutsen in the Brabham into the top 6. The race soon ended with Nigel Mansell winning the Canadian Grand Prix for Brabham, Scapini taking 6th for Ags, Michele Abretto 3rd for Zach Speed, Nelson Piquet 4th for Ferrari, Alan Prost 5th for McLaren, and right off the top 6 was Thierry Boutsen for Brabham. After the end of the 11th round, Derek Warwick was injured and he'd be out for the rest of the season, so uh, Ags is pretty just going to rely on one car because I doubt they're going to use their a test driver at all for the rest of this season. So, round 12, the Portuguese Grand Prix with both Minardi's on the front row of the grid, both Ferrari's in the second row of the grid, and both Rams on the third row of the grid. As, as I uh, suspected, accident used their test driver uh, to replace their work for the rest of the season, so it only affects compete on its own. And the only driver did make the 107% time, it's Jonathan Powell for Ligier, so he won't be taking part for the race. After oh, the start of the Grand Prix, the two Minardi's kept their positions of 1st and 2nd. 
Lap 15 of the Grand Prix, Chris Nissen retired for 10th place along with the bat marker of Eric Comis in the Ligier. After Campos made his first pit stop of the race, Brundle's leading the race with Boutsen 2nd, Mansell 3rd, Berger 4th, and both the McLaren drivers rounded off the top 6. After Campos made his 2nd and final pit stop of the race, Brundle's leading the race with both Brabham 2nd and 3rd, Berger 4th, and both McLarens 5th and 6th. The race came to an end with Martin Brundle winning the Portuguese Grand Prix with both Rabham 2nd and 3rd, Alan Prost in 4th, Gerhard Berger 5th for Sachs Beat and Ayrton Senna gaining the final point in 6th place. After 12 rounds with 4 races to go it was now time to check the Drive's Championship and Martin Brundle has a 2 point lead over Nelson Piquet who has a further 10 points ahead of Nigel Mansell who is in 3rd place in the Drive's Championship and in the Constructors' Championship Obviously, Fry would be leading the championship, and it'd be quite some margin with nice six points, which is about 39 points ahead of Zach Speed in second, who is six points ahead of Brabham in third. Round 13 is the Spash Grand Prix of Jerez. Both Ferraris in the front row, Nigel Mansell third for Brabham, both Lewis is fourth and fifth, and Terry Brisson running off the top six for Brabham. And the only two drivers who did make the 107% time and wouldn't be taking part for the Grand Prix were both the Liché drivers of Jonathan Palmer and Eric Comis. Off the start of the Grand Prix, the two Minard drivers kept their positions of 15th and 14th. Lap 8 of the Grand Prix and Chris Nissen from 14th place retired from the Grand Prix. Lap 19 and Adrian Campos from 14th place retired from the Grand Prix. Another double DNF for Minardi. The race came to an end with Nelson Piquet winning the, the Spanish Grand Prix with his teammate in second, Mansell third, Elliot fourth, Amati fifth for Williams, and Alan Pro six. And once again, there was no highlights after the both Minardi's retired uh, once again. With three rounds left to go, we'll check, take a look at the standings because. Well, in the Constructors' Championship, Ferrari have pretty much already won the championship with three races left to go for the Constructors. However, the Drivers' Championship is still a three-horse race between the two Ferraris and Nigel Mansell for Brabham. While fourth place for Kelly Alberto was officially out of contention because he could only get 58 points, but to do that you would need to finish uh, first in all three races, which isn't going to happen. And as you can see here, Zach Speed are second place with nearly half the amount of points Ferrari has. And with only three races to go, the only possible amount of points they can get is 45, which would bring it to 102, which is not enough to catch McLaren. Just before the 14th round of the season, Oscar Leroux was injured during the Spanish Grand Prix and would be out for the next two races. This time, the Roos is actually going to have their test driver compete for the next round, which happens to be Satoru Nakajima, who won last season in the Grand Prix Manager mod in Season 5. Round 14, the Mexican Grand Prix at Mexico City. Both Ferraris in the front row, both McLaren in the second row. Philly Palio 5th for Lotus and Thierry Boutsen 6th for Brabham. The two Minari drivers are 10th and 15th in the grid. Satoru Nakajima, the test driver for the Roos, outqualified Philippe Streif in 16th place, while Streif only got 18th place. The three drivers did make the 107% time and wouldn't be taking part of the race, were Nanini for Benetton and both Ligier drivers. During the formation lap, Philippe Allier, who qualified 5th in for Lotus, stalled his car so he had to start from the pit lane. Meanwhile, the two Minari drivers got off underway with them both holding their positions of 10th and 15th, only gaining position thanks to Philippe Alio uh, starting from the pit lane. Lap 14 of the Mexican Grand Prix and Giovanna Matti retires from 6th place that pushed Gerhard Berger into the points position. After Adrian Campos made his pit stop because Chris Nissen retired during the stop, PK was leading the race with Prost in 2nd, Brundle 3rd, Senna 4th, Boots in 5th and Gerhard Berger in 6th place. That would help uh, PK increase his lead over Brundle in the Drivers' Championship, while Nigel Mansell is outside the points in 8th. In After Campos' last pit stop of the race, 
PK are still leading with Brundle in second, Prost in third, Boots in fourth, Berger fifth, and Alberto round the top six. PK was still increased the lead over Brundle in the Drive's Championship, and Nigel Mansell wouldn't score any points, which could knock him out of contention for the last two races of the season. Lap 53 and Adrian Campos retired for 13th along with Nigel Mansell from 8th place. That officially made Mansell be knocked out of contention as in as in he can no longer win the Drivers' Championship by any margin at all. So that means it was now only going to be between the two Ferrari drivers for the Drivers' Championship. The race ended with a, with a Ferrari 1-2 with PK winning the race. Brundle in 2nd, Alain Prost 3rd for McLaren, Thierry Boots in 4th for Brabham, Ayrton Senna for McLaren, and Gerberg gained the final point in 6th place. With only 2 rounds left to go, it is now time to check both the Drivers' and the Constructors' Championship. So we already know that it's only the Ferraris that, can, um, that are only, uh, the ones in contention. There's a 4 point gap between PK and Brundle, so this was still going to be a tight um, race a tight margin to the end of the season and in the constructors we already know Ferrari have already won they've already got more than double the points of second place Brabham and Zach Speed so it was pretty much only going to be about a second between the, the second place teams after the Mexican Grand Prix La Russe have officially gone bankrupt which means there are now only 10 teams left in the driver lineup so Streif, Nakajima and Laruri all are out of a driver seat. And here is the updated driver's transfer for season 6 to confirm the three drivers who no longer have a driver's seat this season. Round 15, the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. Both Minari's in the front row, both Fry's in the second row, Alberto 5th for Zach Speed, and round right the top 6, Philippe Ariel for Lotus. The two championship contenders in the second row of the grid, so it's still um, going to be very interesting who gets the edge uh, in this Grand Prix because the next round is the last of the season. And the only two drivers that didn't make the 107 percent time and would be taking part were Eric Owens for Liche and Alessandro Nini for Benetton. During the formation lap, Ayrton Senna, who qualified 10th for McLaren, stalled his car through and start from the pit lane. But out of the start of the race, the two Minari drivers kept their positions of first and second. After both Minari's made their first pit stops of the Grand Prix, Comas was leading the race with PK second, Prost in third, Mansell in fourth, Amati in fifth, and round right the top six is Philippe Palio in sixth place, while Martin Brundle has is uh, was slipped down to seventh place now in the point position. However, it would mean uh, Brundle would be five, another five points behind PK, which means there would be a nine-point deficit between the two drivers for the last race of the season. After the Minaris made their second and final pit stop of the Grand Prix, Philly Palio was leading the race for Lotus, with Campos in second, Mansell third for Brabham, Berger fourth for Zach Speed, PK fifth for uh, Ferrari, and Prost round the top six for McLaren. However, the other championship contender of Martin Brundle and the other Ferrari was still behind PK, which means PK still had the advantage. Lap 46 of the Japanese Grand Prix, and Adrian Campos retires in second place along with Nigel Mansell in third place for Brabham. That pushed Giovanna Matti in the Williams and Gerhard Berg in the fast speed into the top six. Just before the race had ended, Giovanna Matti in 4th place for Williams to retire from the Grand Prix to push Martin Brown to the top 6. Ali won the race for Lotus, PK 2nd for Ferrari, Prost 3rd for McLaren, Berger 4th for Zach Speed, Scapini 5th for Ags, and Martin Brown gained the final point 6th place. In the Drivers' Championship, that would mean PK has a 9 point lead over Martin Brundle coming to the final race of the season. The only outcome Brundle can hope for to win a title would be to win the race and PK to not score any points for them to be, to be the joint champions this season. Round 16, the final round of the season is at Adelaide for the Australian Grand Prix. Both Ferraris in the front row. Fully Palio third for Lotus in third. Air to third, fourth for McLaren. Chris Nissen fifth for Minardi and Alan Prost running off the top six. The other Minardi is in 10th place for Adrian Campos. 
and the only driver who did make the 107 percent time and would be making the uh, making the start of the race in this last round of the season is Johnson Powell for Lee Shea. Meanwhile, um, Derek Warwick did for, uh, come back uh, for this last round of the season in 14th, while his teammate is 13th. Off for the start of the race, Chris Nissan uh, stayed, held on to 5th place, while Adrian Campos got past Johnson, no, Stefan Johansson into 9th place. After both Minaris made their first pit stops of the race, both the Ferraris were leading the race, Ali was third for Lotus, both McLaren, Senna and Prost were fourth and fifth, and Giovanna and Matti ran up the top six for Williams. As things stand, Brunt PK would win the Drivers' Championship. Lap 50 of the Austrian Grand Prix and Thierry Boutsen retired from 10th along with Chris Nissen in 9th place. After Campos is second and final pit stop of the Grand Prix, Brundle's leading the race with Alio second for Lotus, PK third for Ferrari, both McLaren's fourth and fifth, and Giovanni Matti for Williams throughout the top six. I think stands PK would win the championship because Martin Brundle would still be five, four points behind uh, PK in the Drivers' Championship at the end of this round. Lap 74 of the Australian Grand Prix and Nelson Piquet for Ferrari retired from the Grand Prix. That meant all Martin Barrow had to do was win the Grand Prix and basically share the drive's title with Nelson Piquet. And it also pushed Michele Alberto and the South Speed into the top six. The race came to an end with Martin Brundle winning the race and also sharing the title with Nelson Piquet. Ariel came sec for Lotus, both Ferrari third and fourth. Giovanni Matti 5th for Williams, and Michele Abreu gained the final point of the season in 6th place. With every round done, it's now time to look at the drivers and constructors championship for the last time this season. Here is the final driver standings of the season. We have two champions this season, both the Ferrari drivers of PK and Brundle with 71 points each. 30 more than 3rd place Nigel Mansell in the Brabham, but still 5 points more than the 5 time champion in this mod, Alan Prost for McLaren. The two Zach Speed drivers getting 5th and 6th with 32 points to Alberto and 30 to Gerhard Berger, which is 7 more than Ayrton Senna in the other McLaren and Franco Scapini the top AGS driver. Looking further down we have Billy Palio with 21 points for Lotus which is the same the amount as the other axe driver of Derek Warwick. Thierry Butson has 17 points what compared to his team with mates of Mansell 41. Giovanni Matti gained 8 points for Williams and the last point score is Andrew Chesaris for Benetton and then we have the other drivers who all fail to score points. The other Benetton drivers Nanini, Jonathan Powell for Ligier, Mike Sarko for Minardi. The other drivers who didn't score points, Pascal Fabry, the other Lotus driver, despite the fact that his team got 21 points. Ginzai, who only made a one-off appearance for Brabham this season. Eric was the other Liché driver. Stefan Johansson, the other Williams driver, compared to his teammate of Giovanna Matti, gained 6 points. The other two Minari drivers are Nissan and Campos. And we have Fabe Streif, uh, also with no points, who was at La Russe. The Touring Academy, who only made a one-off appearance for La Russe. Last and probably not least, Oscar Lurie and the other Lurus. Moving on to the Constructors' Championship this season, and Ferrari have won by 80 points ahead of Zach Speed, who got second with 62 points, three more than the McLaren. So McLaren have finally not uh, won a Constructors' Championship this mod. They only got one more point than Brabham in fourth, who was ahead of Ags with 44. Lotus were 21 because Philippe Ali scored all 21 points for the team. Giovanni Matti scoring all 8 points for Williams. And Andrew Cheddar scoring all 6 points for Benetton. And then we have Liché and Minardi who both failed to score points. Along with LaRousse who are officially bankrupt. With the drivers and constructors Chinese chips out the way, it's now time to see what engines were improved for the next season of Grand Prix Manager 2, the 1987 mod. Renault have improved their engines. We are the only team that are using Renault engines. Next up, Motori Moderni have improved their engines, which nobody is using. We used them only back in Season 1 uh, when we were managing Minardi. And here's the thing. That's the only two engine upgrades there were um, for this season. Uh, no, Tag Porsche, Honda, Ferrari, 
Ferrari, Ford, no, none of them upgraded their engines at all, so it's just Motori, Mardari and Renault that improved their engines for next season. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the season. I have to say, this was very, very difficult to watch this season with Minardi. The amount of times we double DNF'd in a lot of these races, I think more than half of them we double DNF'd, and also we scored no points. Probably the, very, the absolute worst season uh, Minardi have had uh, in this mod. One more thing before we wrap this video up. One of the three bankrupt teams are coming back into F1 for the next season of this mod. Now, we had Terrell who went bankrupt in Season 4, we had Arrows go bankrupt in Season 5, and we now have LaRousse who went bankrupt in Season 6. Which one of these three teams is coming back to this F1 1987 mod for Season 7? Leave, leave your answer in the comments, and if you, get, if you get this correct, then I'll give you a mention or something like that. But anyway, have a wee think about it. Hope you get the right answer of which team's coming back. Terrell, Arrows, or The Roots. Good luck, and hopefully you get the right answer. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully next season, Minardi, we will start doing better than what we did this season. Thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye!